the 1990s X-Men animated series, season 4, episodes 6 and 7. Thoughts of these episodes are called Courage and Secrets Not Long Buried. So, before I get into it, in the description box, the top link is to donate to the SAG After Strikers. Please do so. Extremely important cause. And the... Then there's a bunch of links to videos that help explain why this is such an important strike. And let's get into courage. So this entire episode is about whether or not Morph is has completely recovered. You know, we open on him leaving M Muir Island, you know, where, where Mora McTaggart has been taking care of him. And... I really appreciate this very honest, raw depiction of PTSD, like, when he realizes that he's dealing with sentinels, at first he freezes, you know, then he tries to throw himself back into it, but overextends himself, and, you know, there at the end he says, I'm not ready, you know, I, I want to work with you guys, but what if, you know, yeah, you know, he is, he he does still need more time to recover, you know, and that doesn't mean, you know, at one point he says, oh, I'm useless. That's not, you know, we need to, to take care of our mental health. So, yeah, I really appreciate that. I, I like that Wolverine, like, immediately and fully trusts him, and Cyclops is a bit more reluctant because they are very much, you know, Wolverine, like, both of them worked with him for years. Both of them really like him, but Wolverine is a kind of go-with-your-gut, trust-your-instincts kind of person, and Cyclops is very much like, let's, let's go on what we can observe, you know, and, yeah, the, the, I am not sure there's much else specific to this episode. Loved seeing Master, Bro Master Mold now with no body, and you know, for a while he's like hanging from like cables, and that's you know, that's kind of kind of cool. You know, uh, decapitated head, that's cool. But then he gets like cut off from the cable and grows spider legs, and he's walking, you know, and it's this decapitated head walking around on spider legs right out of the thing from 1982 absolutely love it just yeah wonderful stuff I wonder if this is where they this episode is where they got the idea for the movie I guess it's, there's probably also a comic book that this was based on this thing of you know if they yeah you know um, sentinels made from a material that isn't the the kind of steel that they're that we're used to seeing them made from which of course makes it much tougher for magneto to interfere let's see it was cool to see gyrich and trask again and apparently mr gyrich has been in the jungle for quite some time now senator I think that I, I did kind of like how, you know, one of them's like, oh, I caught a fish. Here you go. Just plops it on top of the other's paper, like something out of office space. And the other was like, dude, I'm a scientist. You know, just, uh, yeah. And, and, you know, yeah, honestly, I believe that you would keep bringing up, you know, oh, yeah, you're a scientist. You're a scientist. That's why your own work turned on you. Because you're such a such a genius, right? Just like you know, on on one hand, you know they also can't quite like they can't really function independently of one another because they don't know anybody else. You know they need as much you know help as they can get, and it's also the kind of thing of like if one of them left the other, how would the other not constantly think, oh, any minute now he's going to turn me in, he's going to turn me in to try to get a lenient sentence and just you know. Yeah, it would be, it would, so, so, yeah, and, and, you know, they're both pretty miserable, which, 
you know, considering the the awful things they've done. Yeah, you know, that's that is what sometimes happens. And let's get into secrets not long buried. So Cyclops is is going for the uh, what's it called? He's he's gonna visit the that that guy that helped, you know, the and and I really appreciate how much of this episode actually maintains the mystery. I, th I think it's like halfway through the episode before we get a clear answer. For a while, it's just real mysterious. It's like, okay, someone shot him down. This guy Braddock gave the order. But, like, why are people behaving so weirdly? You know, the that first guy, uh, the, the doctor person, you know, and Scott's like, why didn't you stop? Did you not see me? And, you know, there's clearly something weird going on. And, you know, cool to see Toad. I actually wasn't sure if he was going to show up in this show at all. I got to admit, I, I barely recognized him at first. Like, I did put pieces together before we got the name drop but I'm really not used to him in the the 90s design with the with the jester costume and the just yeah um yeah I I thought they did a good job using the the goo that his hands can produce I appreciate that he's not you know in the in the first book that he appears Magneto legit literally says, stop your sniveling, Toad. That's how he was originally characterized. I quite appreciate that that's... And I think that had changed by the by this point in the comics as well. But just, yeah, that got old for me pretty quickly. I, I gotta admit, I've, you know, for that I do prefer this show's version and the, the movie version's. Now, and, and yes, I do mean versions. There's no way that's the same guy. Anyway, um, let's see. But, but yeah, you know, it's a, it's a little while before we realize what's really going on. And basically, it's like this kind of cult, you know, Jonestown or something. Like, they're completely isolated from the rest of the world. And, you know, the leader, what he says goes. And just... Yeah, that was very, very cool, and, and I appreciate, you know, they didn't feel the need to, like, constantly throw in mutant battles, because it would just felt weird, and the focus on Cyclops, who I guess is actually the only X-Man who appears in almost this entire episode, so that's, I, I quite appreciate that, you know, and... Yeah, you know, I think it's it can be really good to take a character like Cyclops and isolate him from the others. Because the thing is, as soon as he's with the others, you know, you can get some really good stuff out of him. But a lot of the time he's going to be the leader, and there's maybe like a, a conflict that he has to resolve, you know, some of the... Let's be honest, happens a lot on the show. Some of the X-Men are fighting with each other or something. But here, like, he has no one else to rely on. He really is entirely on his own. And, you know, the, the best way to explore a character is to put them in a situation that you would, like, off the, you know, if someone just explained it to you, they would think, oh, there's no way. There's, he's not going to get out of that, you know. How is Cyclops on his own without powers, going to get safely out of a town run by a mutant, you know, and he's got a bunch of mutants, uh, you know, and, yeah, like, it was it was legitimately, you know, when, when Cyclops is, like, trying to get help and people are, like, shutting the door in his face and all this, you know, just legitimately, really, you know, and, and yeah, you know, Braddock said, no, just, Throw him out of here, you know. He can he can ask for help. He can beg for help, you know. There's a he he feels that confident in this, you know. As usual, good use of mutant powers. I think that might be about 
what there is to say. So, yeah. Um, you know, each time we see Morph, it's like, why does why does he have to leave again? You know, because he's so he's so much. He's legitimately compelling. Like he he actually you know starts out a hero, then he's a villain some, and now you know he comes back. But it's like, is he gonna, you know, is he actually back? Kind of thing. And just yeah. And. I think that might be oh, right. I suppose with with Braddock, we yet again see you know some mutants want you know have have very optimistic, idealistic ideas of how mutant humans you know relate to one another. You know, Xavier definitely believes that it's possible, but then you know. People like Braddock, you know, Cortez, like, there's various that just, you know, maybe there's been too much abuse. They they legitimately can't. You know, and actually, Braddock doesn't even, like, with Cortez, it was, he does not want anything to do with non-mutants. And Braddock, he doesn't even care if you're a mutant or not. You know, he just wants his power. And that is sometimes something that happens if you feel powerless, if you're really disempowered for a lot of time, you know, and yeah, you know, by by the time we meet Braddock, he's, you know, he, he basically can't really imagine not being in charge, not having the control, you know, like... At the start of the episode, he has, you know, he has Cyclops attacked, even though he doesn't know at all who he is, you know. Like, he, this, this guy could be anyone. The, the, the one thing, you know, the, the, oh, he's, he's like thinking about the, the, I forget the name, but the, the professor, you know. And that's enough. Braddock doesn't care if, you know, is he there, is, is Cyclops there to kill the professor? Is he a friend of his? Anything in between doesn't matter because Braddock fears losing control again. And yeah, that is it for these two episodes. And tomorrow we'll be talking about Nightcrawler, the episode and character, and part one of One Man's Worth. So, yeah, catch you again tomorrow. Make mine marvel.